So one sentence of advice to some sophomore or junior who's watching this today and, and thinks to himself, gee, Dr. Soul just told me the America in which I'm going to grow up will be a shrunken place. No, no. Uh, it's, it's not over till it's over, as Yogi Berra said. And uh, I, I would say to this young person, if we, through some miracle, get through this, please take to heart the lesson of what happens when you vote on the basis of uh, rhetoric and symbolism and instead of using your mind. Uh, it doesn't matter how smart you are unless you stop and think. Hey guys, welcome back to that liminal period. It's your girl, Chun Li Shadi. I know I've had quite a few conversations related to politics lately. And I don't know, I think today it'd be a good conversation for us to have just to level set, I guess, some of my perspective. Like I said, there's not any one individual that I completely agree with on anything. However, today I did create a montage of different thought leaders that really help influence me and my current thoughts, right? And again, I encourage you guys, if there's anything that you guys disagree with, or if there's a different perspective that I should be privy to, please don't hesitate to comment in the section down below and let me know your thoughts. But anyways, first off, okay, just without these thought leaders biases or their perspective, let's just first go to Google. Okay. I want to see what is what does it actually mean to be conservative, right? Because I know a lot of people have had questions lately. What are conservative beliefs? First off, it says, they often advocate for a strong national defense, gun rights, capital punishment, and a defense of Western culture from perceived threats posed by communism and moral relativism. The first statement is more or less a fact, and the second one is a little bit more, I guess, cultural context, right? Okay. Second word we're going to look into is what does it mean to be liberal, right? Or what do liberals believe in? Believing in equality and individual liberty, supporting private property and individual rights, supporting the idea of limited constitutional government, recognizing the importance of related values such as pluralism, toleration, autonomy, body integrity, and consent. Okay, so... Both, both definitions, or I guess like both words, it's a mouthful, right? Mouthful concept, and I think there's a lot of nuances, right? Because again, I think this is the traditional ideas of what does it mean to be conservative as well as like what it means to be a liberal. And that's why I feel like a lot of people who were classic liberals have slowly started leaning a little bit more to the right. And again, conservatism and liberalism, um, I feel like these are just, you know, like individual perspectives and how you feel. However, it doesn't necessarily always have to tie into your political votes, right? Like it doesn't, being a conservative does not mean that you are guaranteed to be a Republican. However, sometimes like we have to dig in and actually look at the policies. That's why I wanted to start today's conversation with that Thomas Sowell clip, okay? You can be as smart as you want to be. However, if you don't actually use your brain to think, what good is it? I guess so now that we've level set and have a, I guess like a little bit more textbook understanding of conservative versus liberal, let's actually dive into today's montage. What is the liberal premise? I guess uh, uh, the Rousseau notion, you know, that man is born free but is everywhere and changed, that the real problem with the world is that the institutions are wrong. If the institutions were right, then man, there, there is nothing in human nature that would cause us to be unhappy. It's the fact that we have the wrong institution. What is the conservative premise? That uh, man is flawed from, uh, from day one, and that uh, you, there are no solutions, there are only trade-offs, and whatever you do to deal with one of man's flaws, it creates another problem, but that you try to get the best trade-off you can get, and that's all you can hope for. Yes, sir. And here, Dr. Soul is just providing a little bit more of a moral context let me just put this in perspective there is a difference between republican conservative and christian and i think a lot of people conflate all three of those together as like the trinity of politics it, it, that's not the way it go if you say you're a christian you need to be abiding by christian values in jesus christ of nazareth and that is a closed that's a that's a closed unit 
If you're a conservative, that means you espouse conservative values. If you're a Republican, that means you're, re- you're voting for Republicans. That's, that's what being a Republican is. You can be a liberal and still vote Republican and, and, and associate yourself with the Republican Party. You can be gay, lesbian, trans, gender uh, uh, identifying queer, or whatever they call themselves today, and still re- vote for Republicans and be a Republican. You can't do all that and be a conservative because that those are not conservative values, and you cannot be those things and be Christian. People. Are- okay, so I definitely wanted to just give a shout out to Officer Tatum because I just think that he was able to communicate that and articulate that so concisely. Okay, much better job than Chun Li could have ever done, and that's why I say is like I understand in the comment section why some people are saying that even though black community at large have conservative values, they might not always align with the Republican Party because they're not seeing themselves represented. And this is the same thing with the Asian community. As a whole, the Asian community tend to be very passive politically. So again, how can you see yourself represented and how can you see people that share the same belief and thoughts as you? if you're not actually going out there and making it known. But anyways, next bit of conversation is actually gonna come from Valuetainment, a very interesting perspective from someone that has experienced a lot more life than me. So let's hear what he has to say. Gotcha. And I'm an independent now. I can't stand the Democratic Party. Really? Today. What happened? What, cha- what uh, caused you to uh, change? They decided to be anti-family and anti-man, and I don't buy into that. Has it always been like that? No, it wasn't. Uh, Something happened. They kind of got stuck over there in that far left corner someplace, and they forgot about the working people in this country. When do you think that happened, Judge? Uh, Because you ran as a Democrat. I did. It bothers me. Somewhere in the last 55 years, what's happened is the country has switched over into glorifying what I call dysfunction. And at some point, it's just enough is enough. You've got a thing right now where they're trying to groom children in school. They're trying to install a secular religion as the official religion of the country. People don't have any cause, any purpose anymore. So... They want to give them one, but in this one it says you have no duty, honor, obligation, responsibility, accountability, be what the hell you want to be. Just get your freak on and there you go. But that's not sufficient to keep people working. So I don't know if you guys are familiar, but this is Judge Joe Brown. And I just remember growing up and seeing him on public television. But anyways... Um, I always appreciate his sage words, but, you know, he's adding perspective. He's, again, making the moral connection with politics. And that's why, like I said, like, I just want to share these clips because they're going to be able to actually articulate it so much better than I can. You say 55 years. Is it probably closer to the last 15 years that it's been? No, it's been working. See, I, I remember the class UCLA 1969, and I... Remember what was being said back then when people said we hate men Mm. for one reason or another and men are the cause of war. So we It's talking about the feminist movement and like that's why I've had so many videos when I first started my channel just talking about the gender pay gap, just talking about the double standards and I guess how modern day women view their role within society as well as men. This thought process has been ingrained into our our culture, our Western culture, for the last 50, 60 years. And he's talking about modern day feminism, guys. We're going to ruin this thing for the men and get rid of masculinity. And you had this problem with Hollywood when it was going broke in the face of color television. And you switched from two movies every Thursday and Sunday every week of the year and Hollywood was going broke so they said let's ramp the fee up from 50 cents to a buck and a half and we will have one movie that stays in as long as we can so let's attract the most people by going to the lowest common denominator promoting this function 
ridiculousness, and meanwhile, we can propagandize the country to get rid of manhood, and that basic. Okay, and again, he's just doing it beautifully, making the connection between the economy with Hollywood and the film industry not making enough money, and that's why they increase the price tag of going to the movie theater. However, they increase the price tag and increase the marketing and I guess like the way that they were enticing more people to view is by encouraging that disgraceful behavior. And we will it's have one movie that stays in as long as we can. So let's attract the most people by going to the lowest common denominator, promoting this function ridiculousness and meanwhile we can propagandize the country to get rid of manhood and that basically is what's been happening i talk like that to get my point across because when i wasn't talking like that wearing a bow tie y'all wasn't paying me no attention and i was going to the supreme court changing laws and legislations in this country i was working with over 50 u.s congressional members from ted cruz to mark rubio senator john Cornyn. i was on the front page of the american bar association journal y'all wasn't paying attention then so I gave y'all what y'all want, a ignorant mother nigga that talk like them rappers. Now y'all paying attention, huh? I got y'all attention, checkmate. Now let me tell y'all what y'all need to hear. We f***ed up as a race of people since y'all so caught up into my delivery. 5% of children now are catching HIV from ages 13 to 21. What y'all worried about? 85% of the new chlamydia, all the new cases of teenagers. What y'all so caught up about? Only 35% of most kids in inner cities can read on or above their grade level. What the f are y'all talking about and these kids can't read? I want to share this last clip because if you guys are familiar with my channel, I've actually featured Charleston White in a couple of my segments. And yeah, like I said, like sometimes like I question as far as his delivery and his tone and everything, but I completely understand because sometimes you have to lower yourself to that same degeneracy that Judge Joe Brown was talking about in order to be able to communicate with the individuals. Because like I've mentioned to you guys in the past, for some reason, there are certain conversations that people are just disinterested in. So again, we can't even come to a common understanding where everybody's thoughts and perspectives can be represented because we're unwilling to actually have those hard conversations. And that's in a way, that's why I do appreciate people like the Charleston White and the Kevin Samuels, because it should not matter. Your delivery and your tone, it should, like, the only thing that should matter is the truth. So I want to end this video with a quote from Mr. Walter E. Williams. If you guys aren't familiar with him, he was a prominent American economist who was also a conservative and was focused on black American issues. He said, for somebody to do well in school, somebody needs to make him go to bed on time and get a good 10 hours of sleep. Someone must make him do his homework. Somebody must feed him breakfast in the morning and somebody must make him mind his teacher. If those things are not done, I don't care how much money you put in the school system, education will not occur. And I want to share this quote because he is talking about the importance of having a present parent in a child's life, especially during those developmental years. But anyways, I hope I gave you guys a lot to think about and um, I guess give you guys a little sneak peek into the minds of Chun-Li and how I feel about the concept of conservatism. And anyways, I've enjoyed this conversation. I hope you guys did too. And I look forward to speaking with you guys next time. Bye.